I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Uh, today I want to talk about a strategy when it comes to cancer. For the longest time we have now seen the amount of lives that cancer takes away from us. What I'm talking about today is not a magic treatment, not a magic food, not a magic diet or a magic exercise or a magic yoga asana. They don't exist. Cancer is a multifactorial disease. It requires a multifactorial approach. It's as simple as that. While you may have the best treatment in the world, you need to consider when it comes to cancer. In fact, let me not just not talk about cancer. Any disease, any disease requires a strategy. Now, let me tell you why. You know, as we grow up, our mindsets and our belief systems are molded by what we see. So when we think of cancer, we think of chemotherapy, radiation, surgery. Fine, that's the right protocol, but that's not enough. There's so much more that you have to add into your lifestyle if you really want to overcome this disease or you also, also want to look at prevention. The same thing with diabetes. You need a strategy. You just don't need more medicines to balance your blood sugar levels on your uh, blood reports and then after a couple of years, you now have CKD and high blood pressure. So whatever condition you may have, it requires a strategy. Okay, now let's talk about cancer today. The reason why we need to invest in prevention is because number one, you, me, everyone out there who doesn't even have cancer, we have cancer cells within us. Like the job of your healthy cells, the job is to try and stay healthy and try to survive every second of the day and the night. That's the job of your healthy cells. The job of your cancer cells within you, yes, they have a job, is to try to trick your immune system. It is to try to beat your healthy cells and start a new, you know, a new source of nutrition by hijacking your healthy cells and starting to feed your cancer cells so they become stronger and stronger through a, through a process of angiogenesis. So constantly, you, me, everyone, your children, everyone has cancer cells. Always remember, the reason why you need to try to invest in your prevention and lifestyle is because your cancer cells are trying to compete with your healthy cells to cause cancer. That's the bitter, ugly truth that's going on within all of us. There are good cells and bad cells. Your abnormal cells are looking for ways to trick your healthy cells and trick your immune system. So there's this constant fight, which is why if we do not do what we're supposed to do, we create a favorable environment for the abnormal cells to now become more and more abnormal and become into a full-grown cancer. Now, like I said, there are so many other things that cause it. We're gonna talk about the risk factors involved. But the reason why we invest in prevention, everyone's talking about preventive medicine, preventive health, all of that stuff. It's not another diet. It's not more Ayurvedic pills. It's not more supplements and nutraceuticals. That may help. That's not your solution. It is your lifestyle. And today we're going to understand exactly what the risk factors are when it comes to the prevention of cancer. Okay, everyone out there acts like we don't know why it happened. Although science is showing us more and more connections with emotional stress, chronic over the years, inflammation, which is uncontrolled. And how do we know we have inflammation? Look around, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all of these diseases are inflammatory conditions. We know that pollution plays a big role. We know that your internal environment, how acidic you are, how constipated you are, also contributes towards all of these things. So we can't act like we don't know why we got cancer. In most cases, very few cases, we don't have any clues. We have absolutely no clues. It's a very, very strong genetic predisposition. But for everything else, yes, we have to invest in prevention. Let me repeat that once again. All of us have cancer cells in us and they are constantly trying to compete with the healthy cells to find their own ways of robbing and stealing nutrition, of tricking your own immune system and everything else. You don't have to be scared. You need to be smart and invest in prevention. So number one, Let's talk about the risk factors, the main risk factors. If we have them, we need to address them. We don't have to be scared. We need to address them, as simple as that. Number one, you should know your family history and your genetic predisposition. Because if your family has a history of cancer, this should <clears throat> motivate you to take more care of yourself. At the same time, if you have a genetic predisposition and you have a family history of cancer, it does not mean you are going to get cancer. As simple as that. There's something called gene expression. We all have good genes and bad genes. For the bad genes to manifest into a full-blown disease, we need to provide it with a favorable environment. So if we have the wrong lifestyles and we're creating a favorable environment for your bad genes to manifest, okay, 
it's going to happen. It's as simple as that. But if we're taking care of it because we know that there is cancer running in the family, it's in our genes, we take care to build our lifestyles in a way that we do not and we try to prevent any triggers from triggering off the bad gene into a cancer. So number one, know your family history and genetics. Number two, there's nothing much to be said about this, smoking. It's established scientifically, medically, you need to take care if you smoke. You need to understand it is one of the strongest risk factors. Now a lot of smokers will look around and say, oh, but we don't have cancer. I know so many people who smoke and they don't have cancer. True, you are right, absolutely right, clap, all good, okay? We don't want to take the risk. It doesn't have to become you. Yes, there are many people who also drink a lot of alcohol and they never have problem with their livers or anything else. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you may fall into that lucky ratio or that unlucky ratio. And you also need to understand, smoking directly will not cause cancer. Smoking causes carcinogens to get into your blood. You have problems with your lungs, low immunity, high inflammation. So you see it's multifactorial again. So don't use that as a lame excuse. If you want to go on smoking, that's up to you. But trying to justify why you're smoking the wrong way isn't right. So we know smoking is a very, very, very strong risk factor for cancer. Number two, you may smoke, but your loved ones around you may not. But if they're passive smoking, the risk, if not higher, is the same. So you need to understand that passive smoking is also a high risk factor for cancer. So if you are living with someone who smokes, please understand it's not to scare you, it is a risk factor. Accept it, work around it, that's up to you, but you cannot change the bitter, ugly truth that it is a risk factor. Number three, obesity. High risk factor. Now don't get scared. If you have fat in your body and all of that stuff, it doesn't mean you're gonna get cancer. There are many, many people who are obese and they have absolutely clean medical records. They're absolutely fine. But understand the complications that come with obesity. With obesity comes insulin resistance, possible type 2 diabetes, which again are high risk factors for almost every single cancer. Something called metabolic syndrome, which is when you have insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure together. So you need to understand that losing a little bit of weight, don't be in a hurry. Okay, don't do it the wrong way. Even cutting down your body fat percentage a little bit every month is reducing your risk. Science shows us that your risk for breast cancers and most cancers double when you are obese. You don't have to get worried. You need to get motivated to try and lose a little bit of fat and a little bit of weight the right way. It's the complications that come with obesity that creates most of the problems. The number one complication being a hormonal imbalance. We all know that people who are obese, without even doing a blood test, you know they have a hormonal imbalance. It's as simple as that. Now your hormones control everything from inflammation to your immunity, to cell instruction, to DNA instruction and everything else. Everything that you need to prevent the deadliest of diseases, including cancer from hitting your body. So that's gentle motivation for you. If you are obese, do everything you can to reduce your fat percentage. Next, stress. Can you believe that science is now showing us the 100% connection between chronic stress, chronic emotions, chronic emotions like distress, bitterness, the inability to forgive, anger, hatred, grudges, all of these things with cancer. What's the connection? It's simple. It's not airy-fairy. We know that chronic stress decreases your immune system, raises havoc with your hormonal imbalance and increases inflammation. Everything that causes a cancer and most other diseases. Work with your emotional wellness. These are risk factors. It's for you to write down, introspect and make little changes. You don't have to get worried about it. Carbs and sugar. If you are overdoing it on carbohydrates and overdoing it on white sugar and all of these refined products out there, your risk for cancer increases. How and why? Number one, it increases your, ability, your, increases your insulin resistance, possible type 2 diabetes, obesity, inflammation, low immunity. There's your answer. You don't have to go off carbs completely. Choose quality carbs and maintain the quantity at the right time. As simple as that. You should be eating less white sugar or no white sugar and probably getting your natural sweetness from natural sweetness. Not artificial, but, but natural. Fruits and vegetables, please understand. 
Okay, there are extremes on the internet telling you, on the internet telling you not to eat fruits, not to eat certain vegetables. Please understand that most of your vitamins and your minerals that are required for a healthy immune system and keeping inflammation low is found in fruits and is found in vegetables. Now you may take a fad diet that doesn't allow you to eat fruits and they start condemning fruits as sugars and all of that stuff. The question you need to ask yourself, number one, trillions of people, bi sorry, billions of people eat fruits and vegetables and they are absolutely healthy, great weight, great bodies, great medical parameters, no disease. If fruits and vegetables were the culprit, everyone would be sick. Now, of course, you're getting onto these fad diets that reduce it because you want to lose more and more weight. Or, of course, if you reduce the amount of fruits and certain vegetables, if you're highly diabetic or you're highly obese, yes, it could be beneficial. But that doesn't become the game plan for every human being. Please understand you need fruits and vegetables because what nature can give you in terms of vitamins, minerals, uh, anthocyanides, uh, anthocyanides, uh, polyphenols, uh, flavonoids, nothing unnatural or artificial could ever match up to that. So you may get off fruits and say, I'm popping a multivitamin, you're a fool. Let me tell you that up front because there is no artificial supplement that can give you or mimic what nature has given you. So please understand if your broader goal is your life, your health and prevention of disease, Okay, you will understand the importance of fruits and vegetables. If your shallow short term goal is only weight loss, you will choose fad diets that may help you lose weight, but it will destroy your life and it will destroy your health over time. Please understand the simple logic is millions and millions of people are eating fruits and vegetables for a lifetime and they are absolutely healthy. So how can that now become your poison? It may be the poison for people who are diabetic, obese, and have bad lifestyles, period. Nothing else, okay? Then we move on to alcohol. Excessive binge drinking of alcohol is a high risk for cancer, period. High salt intake. If you have a high salt intake, your risk of cancer increases. Don't be scared. The motivation is to make small changes. As simple as that. Pollution. That's not within our control. But what's within our control is eating the right diets, keeping our liver healthy. Our liver has the job of flushing out toxins that we breathe in from the air that we breathe, doing your lung breathing exercises or pranayama every single day. That's what you can do. Charred foods and burnt foods, barbecuing foods. Unfortunately, this used to be good for us, but now we have heterocyclic amines, which are carcinogens. They are listed carcinogens by the FDA, by the US government, by the UK government, they are listed carcinogens. So by far, try to cook your food the right way. Try not to char your food. Try not to burn your food. Try not to overcook it on a barbecue, in a tandoor, and all of that stuff. Limit it the right way because it is a high risk for cancer and a lot of cardiovascular diseases. Excessive sunlight. Excessive sunlight at the wrong time is a cancer risk as well. Artificial tanning beds found in the US and in the UK today is listed by the US government as a carcinogen. So you want to be careful of these. Carcinogens are possible cancer causing elements. You want to be careful of these things. Okay, infections, we've got to be careful of that. Hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HPVs. So you want to have safe sex. You want to be careful with all of these things because if you get these infections, they are high risks for cancer. Yes, you didn't know about this, but you know about it right now. Okay, so you want to be careful of this. And in case you do have HPV, you do have a hepatitis B and C, please take care of your liver. Take care of your immune system. Do the right things, make the right lifestyle changes so it doesn't go out of control and it doesn't become a higher risk. Vitamin D deficiency. Yes, science has proven it to us a long time ago. Not right now. This, the research has been there for years and years. Vitamin D deficiency is a high risk for almost every single cancer. Fix your levels, get them checked and fix them. Insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Yes, you may be living with it because your doctor said, hey, take your meds. Hey, your reports are looking great. You're fine. You still have diabetes and you still have insulin resistance. You've got to work towards changing your lifestyle so that you can work with your doctor to reduce your medication and improve your condition because scientifically it is a high risk for most cancers. Now remember, Habits are not in the genes. Bad habits are what we learn. Okay? So a lot of people say, oh, I have habits. My mom used to do this. My dad used to do this. No, you learned it from them. Habits, bad habits are not genetic. Bad habits are what you learn. The good thing is you can unlearn them by action. So understand today that if you are looking at preventing a disease or you may even have a disease, 
Okay, it's not just your doctor visits and a piece of paper giving you a nutrition plan. It's a strategy. It's a strategy. What are the foods that suit you? The exercises that suit you? The right amount of sleep, sleep that suits you? Your emotional wellness program that makes you feel better and addresses the root cause of your chronic stress? You know, the reason why the world is chronically sick because we only look at the symptom. We take a medicine, we look at the 10 best foods to beat cancer and we fail. It is a strategy. Why is it a strategy? Because it involves so many mechanisms, so many levers in the human body that modern medicine ignores. Am I against modern medicine? Absolutely not. My own doctors put people on chemotherapy, but it is incomplete. You need to change your lifestyle. You need to work with the risk factors. You need to remove the risk factors if you want to heal or if you want to prevent. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.